Fred, uh, as we've discussed and as you've articulated in your paper, you've, you've experienced and uh, understood in stories of joy not so much self as self-transcendence. And uh, the gift of your paper was to locate that kind of experience of joy, both as an experience and as a formation and development of habit and perspective in Christian worship. Mm -hmm. How do you see liturgy and worship functioning in enabling and potentiating joy and in shaping souls and giving them sight to see mm -hmm. joy? Mm -hmm. Well, on the, on the human side of the equation, I, I remain uh, something of an anthropological pragmatist. Um, I, I think that, that it is across the landscape of the entire body that human beings know and it is this, this uh, body with its emotions and its gestural dispositions that is what connects with the loving promptings of the Spirit. Uh, on, the, on the theological side, uh, it is the gift of the triune God to, to overflow with love uh, for which we can only give thanks and praise and gratitude. And that giving thanks and praise and gratitude is, is, uh, is ultimately joyous as well. We, uh, and, and young people, this is, this is what uh, is, uh, I find so fabulous. Uh, it's the same kind of energy uh, that young people have in other experiences of self-transcendence. It's the same bodily equipment that's swept up into the worship of God. And uh, they, they do this willingly. Uh, it's, it's one of the gifts, I think, that they can share with the church if we allow them. It, this passion that is so easily uh, evoked and then ordered toward the triune God. Now, the way that we the way that we um, uh, help that, that immediacy of passion become a more dispositional Christian joy is, is in, our, in our honest invitation of both praise and lament into our worship. Uh, sometimes worship with young people is all about, you know, uh, uh, subwoofers, and 117 decibels, and and we think you know if we keep it like uh, like the liturgical equivalent of Mountain Dew, then then they'll get it, and then they'll love Jesus. And uh, there's no question that they're already lean in that way, which is which is great. At the same time, uh, to form. Disposi joy dispositionally, that is, as an affection of character, uh, is a task of repeated, over time, liturgical participation, and also um, a, a, of a certain sort. This participation is not just the 117 decibels and the subwoofers and the praise, praise, happy, happy, all the time. Uh, so. I look, for example, to the psalm, some of the psalms as representative of what uh, legitimate, authentic Christian worship might do. The psalmist starts out and says, you know, my life sucks, uh, my enemies are, are heaping abuse upon me, uh, the world's against me, nobody loves me, and yet you are God and I praise you. And, and the psalmist isn't naive, I don't think, it, it, but it's this juxtaposition of the acknowledgement of human pathos with, nevertheless, you are God, and you have always been my God, and you alone can save me. That's the kind of worship that I, I dream about and try to work at with respect to young people, that, yes, we take their, their natural orientation to praise and we don't chasten it, but we deepen it by, by creating space for their suffering, their pathos, to be juxtaposed to it.